What up, YouTube? Uh, my name is Darren, and that, yes, I'm that idiot that runs around playing Skyrim on a treadmill with a bow. Um, it's up to 50 pounds now. Check it out. I wasn't able to play this morning, but I'm going to have an extra long one this afternoon, so check it out. Although, by the time you're seeing this, it's probably long past when that one ran, so whatever. Usually it's 7 a.m. and noonish uh, PST. Anyway, not the point. <laughs> point was, for a couple weeks now, I've been thinking of doing a D&D video on... How WotC can monetize one D and D without pissing us off, and um, that idea is in my head, and I kind of want to talk about it. <clears throat> but with all this OGL stuff, it really seems pointless. They've already basically pissed us all off to the point where I don't think they can come back from that. And when I say I don't think they can back from that, I'm saying I ordered my Dungeon World manual this morning because I'm switching to Dungeon World for now. Um, probably gonna make a crunchier version of Dungeon World eventually, and maybe my channel will end up talking about that a lot at some point, but yeah. Anyhow, a lot of people have talked about the update to the OGL and people have talked it to death. A few things that I want to talk about looking at it is uh, there's some language in here that I think is interesting and I don't think a lot of, I don't think other YouTubers have caught on to this idea, maybe a little bit, but they haven't like said it as explicitly as I think that it needs to be said and I'll, <laughs> that was highlighted in red for some reason. Um, so here, let's talk about this. So first, when we initially conceived the OGL, blah, 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 blah. Um, first, we wanted the ability to prevent, here, I'll, I'll highlight it. First, we wanted the ability to prevent the use of D&D content from being included in hateful, discriminatory products. So that's a little bit of a reference to a lawsuit that, the, <clears throat> that they're in with one of the TSRs. Apparently, when TSR came on the market as a name you could use again, two different companies, both having some distant connection to the original TSR, uh, vied for the name. One of those TSRs released Star Frontiers, uh, which has been accused of being racist and transphobic. I didn't see anything, I only saw one page of a Star Frontiers book. Didn't see anything transphobic on that page, doesn't mean that it's not. Also transphobic can sometimes be used just to describe a lot of different things that, so that's kind of like a, its own term and I'm gonna avoid talking about that. But the racist, Accusation is barely accurate. Um, I wouldn't say that Star Frontiers is racist. I would say Star Frontiers is straight up white supremacist. What I mean by that is everybody points to this um, one like human sub race or whatever. I, I don't know what or species or whatever they have in the book. I didn't see the chapter heading. I just saw we were in the ends <laughs> when we hit this. So that's the only page I saw. But they called it Negrid, which in and of itself sounds like that might be some sort of euphemistic language. I'm not even sure what that is. That could be a thing. If that's a thing, let me know in the comments. I, I know it sounds a little bit like Negro, but like, it sounds like they were trying to like change it to be like, no, it's not that, it's this. Eh. But I could be wrong. And that could also be from the original Star Frontiers. I don't know, I never played Star Frontiers, the original, and I'm never gonna play the new one because it looks horrifying and terrible. But anyway, they had that race, and they got, was it like a plus five to strength and a minus three to intelligence? And people were like, ah, it's racism, because they're trying to say that black people are strong and dumb. Which I mean, yeah, that in and of itself would be racism. The race written below that, because it's in alphabetical order, is Nordic. If you read the Nordic race description, they get a plus four to all ability scores. This isn't racist, this is straight up white supremacist. Right? Like, that's just, like, a whole other level of, oh my gosh, right? Like, wow. Um, what I did, what I didn't notice was them getting a, any kind of armor penalty for their tactical vest, not covering their beer gut, as that's what often people that claim white supremacy, and they just get the... Rrr, rrr. Anyway, <laughs> that's not the point. Point is, in their OGL response, they mentioned the ability to prevent the use of D&D content being included in hateful and discriminatory products. Great. And then we go further on, and they bring this up again somewhere else as well. All three goals. Unaffected, loyalty structure, language. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not putting the loyalty structure in the OGL, is all they're saying. Uh, they'll put it in later once they can get away with it. Um, oh yeah, in addition to language allowing us to address discriminatory and hateful conduct and clarifying what types of products the OGL covers. So again, they're talking about hateful conduct conduct there, um, stealing your work, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so they mentioned it a couple of, it looks like twice at this point. 
um, that they mention hate speech and hateful content. Like, well, we're really just doing this to get rid of hate speech in our products. What I think they're trying to do here with the statement is get people to say, if you're against the new OGL, you're for racism in gaming. And that's, I, I think that's what they're trying to do. I really think they're trying to get the same people that attacked them for the Hadozi fiasco back in the summer to rally behind them and state that any opposition, like all of the people saying that this OGL is horrible, ditch your beyond subscription, they're like, no, you're just racist. I think they're trying to do that. I think they're trying to play the racism card here in their favor and try to make, try to cancel everybody who's rallying against them. That's what I think they're trying to do. And I mean, they're trying to do a lot of stuff with this. Um, what they're not trying to do is hide their arrogance with this, like, uh, what is it? Um, wh where is the line? Those people will only be half right. Uh, second, we're going to hear people say that they won and that we lost because making your voices heard forces us to change our plans. I mean, they didn't change their plans, though. They're just delaying their plans, which is the problem. These people won't be half right. They won, and so did we. No, we nobody won here. Right? There's no winner in this whole situation. Paizo won. Right? Paizo won, and, I'm, and Paizo won because their ORC is what we thought the OGL was. They're making as the ORC, and that's going to, I think, skyrocket Paizo to the next level. So, but what I was going to originally talk about is how they could have monetized. Like, th this one makes them so, so sad. Why did you do this? You didn't need to do this. You could have monetized in ways that we would have been fine with and would have made you tons of money. I mean, we all know what they were going to do was you have a D&D Beyond subscription that gives you access to the virtual tabletop, but to do anything besides being a human in peasant clothing on the virtual tabletop, you're going to have to buy astral diamonds to buy your clothes and buy your equipment <laughs> to arm this guy. We knew it was going to be microtransactioned to hell and people didn't like that. I don't blame you. I was going to give them alternatives to microtransactions to hell. And this is going to be subscription-based microtransactions, but the subscription-based to a BTT, I mean, if you use Roll20, I use Roll20. I pay a subscription for Roll20 every year. Right? We're already used to doing that. If I could do it in D&D Beyond, I might have switched to that if it wasn't microtransaction to hell. Obviously, I'm not going to now because... Uh, going to be microtransaction to hell, but I would have switched to that, and I think a lot of other people would have as well. And here's what makes it sad. All right, subscription to you the, to get access to the BTT, I think people would pay that. People are already paying that if they're using Roll20, right? This is no different than Roll20, except now it's going to you instead of another company. Points for you. Buying books. People are buying the digital books. If you want access to your digital stuff in D&D Beyond, right, which means instant access on your VTT, right? Like they would have, I would hope, or what I would have suggested was you make all of the digital content in the VTT connected to a book. So once you buy like Volo's Guide to Monster, you get all the monster minis with that book that you can just pop right into your tabletop. You just drag it, pop it in, boom, I've got this monster up and ready to go. That's what I would have suggested. One, because it's better for gameplay. And two, it's convincing you to buy the book. Like, I might not buy, buy a monster book because, like, maybe I'll take a stat block here and there and I don't need it. But if I can just instantly get everything I need for my BTT right there, I'd probably pay for that book. I'm not going to lie. And um, a lot of people would do that. Boom. Instant. Like, they're going to sell more books by doing it without microtransactions. If they do it with microtransactions, there's no reason to buy the book. <laughs> I'll just, I'm going to use a custom stat block and then just write your own, like, just copy the monster over in your own, make it private so somebody else can see it. It's what you're going to do because you have to pay so much on the VTT for these things anyway. Or people would just start using generic tokens on the VTT and ruin the entire purpose of it. Or just stick with Roll20 where they're not being microtransactioned to death. Yeah, you got to do work finding tokens or buying tokens in Roll20, but, like, you, yeah, you're not going to want to do this through microtransactions if you can avoid it. But they made it part of the book. They could have sold so much more books. So many more books. Whatever. Wh whichever one makes grammatical sense. They could have sold more books giving us the stuff. And it would have been perfect. And the other thing they could have done, if they had done any market research whatsoever, which this and that OGL 1.1, they obviously didn't do any market research. Um, 
maybe I'll link it in the description. I got a story about how I used to work for Microsoft and then tried to apply to a job at WOTC as a data analyst trying to sw switch that to data science. And they're like, we don't do that. It's like, yeah, you obviously don't do that, but you should. So if you had paid attention to what's going on in the industry, you would know, uh, while there's, well, the third party creators you're, you're worried about and you've marked as what is it? Major corporations, apparently Paizo and Critical Role are major corporations, <laughs> MCDM. Uh, that's not a major corporation. That's a dude on YouTube that like got enough money to pay his friends and some outside contractors to make stuff for him. Like that's not a major corporation, but whatever. Major corporations. Uh, the only one I can think of, I don't think, does Paizo even have stock? I don't even know. Hasbro has stock. They were at 66 bucks at the time of making this. It's surprisingly not going down with all this controversy, which is interesting. So you're Hasbro. But anyway. Um, I will tell you Hasbro, so it starts going down. <laughs> but whatever. But yeah, then they're saying major corporations like Paizo, right? MCDM. So they publish their own books. And a lot of people go to, to places like the DMs Guild, which I think takes 50% or something of the cost. If you charge like five bucks, they get 250, I think. I could be wrong. Let me know in the description if you happen to know how much, um, uh, what is it, DMs Guild actually charges their people, but Watsy, you guys, you were creating an environment that people are going to play the game in. You are creating a VTT that connected to your D&D Beyond character sheet. People already use D&D Beyond for character sheets, almost exclusively. You would have connected it through that environment to a VTT. That VTT would have gotten major use. The next logical step would have been to tell third-party creators, if your stuff is selling well, submit it to us, let us know how much it's sold, how well it's doing, and we'll vet it, and maybe we'll put it into D&D Beyond. We, you know, we'll give you the same deal that like DMs Guild is giving you. But now, players can go, oh my gosh, I can use that crazy Matt Colville Ranger class, as a, and it's a drop-down in D&D Beyond on my virtual tabletop, already just in there, people would have bought it, and they would have bought it from you. Especially since if you uh, pay attention to Questing Beast, we talked about how there's like official players and folk players, you're much more likely to get DMs who are like, oh, only the official stuff, only the official stuff, only the official stuff. Those DMs are much more likely to use a third party product if WotC was putting it into D&D Beyond, right? If Watsi's like, we vetted this, it's cool. The official players would eat that up. You'd be making money off these third-party products. The third-party products are arguably better than what you guys have been producing lately. That's what a lot of people on the internet seem to be thinking. And you can just make money off that. And nobody would be like, oh my god, this is evil. Because like you're just doing what DMs Guild does. You're just what you're doing is you're giving these third-party people a chance to publish through you. As opposed to clawback provisions and all this other crazy stuff that you guys are trying to do, which is just not a good idea. So, that in a nutshell was what that video was going to be about. <laughs> but of course now it doesn't make any sense because of this new OGL nonsense. <sighs> yeah, I'm probably switching to Dungeon World. Um, a lot of people are going to switch to other games. I will mention, I think, where people are going to switch to real quick. What I think is going to happen is you're going to get some people going to stick with D&D and they're going to get monetized to hell, and I feel bad for them. Um, the Stranger Things people, the people that got into the game because of Stranger Things, I believe that they're going to get absorbed into the OSR community. Because the reality is, like, look, the guys in Stranger Things were not playing 5e, right? They were not playing Watsi's D&D. They were playing TSR's first edition. They're playing Moldvay, right? They're playing old-school D&D. OSR is that old-school D&D in the modern age. We call it OSR. It's where all the DMs are going. They're going to grab all the Stranger Things fans. Whatever Critical Role decides to do next is probably where the critters are going to go. But if you got into it because of Critical Role and you like that like heavy, story heavy gaming, I suggest you check out Dungeon World. Like honestly, Dungeon World I think is a better system for you than D&D. And that's why, well that's not why I'm using it. I would prefer something slightly crunchier than Dungeon World, but Dungeon World is very story-driven. I think you'll like it if you are into this through Critical Role. And then there's just the folk players. and they're, If you're a folk player and you like Crunchy, you're probably switching to Pathfinder 2e. I think Pathfinder 2e is too crunchy. 
I mean, D and D five E was already getting a little bit um, out of control with all the feats and the abilities and the character progressions and all this stuff. And I think Pathfinder is just more options, which makes it more difficult for DMs. That's just my opinion, but if you like that level of crunch, if you're playing D&D for all the feats and the crunch, and not just for the framework, and the fact that it's, as I've said in a previous video, the Copenhagen interpretation of role-playing games, it's what we're used to. If you're playing it because you like the crunch, and you want more crunchy, and you love these optional rules, and you're grabbing this for crunch, then yeah, definitely, Pathfinder 2E is for you. Go for it. Especially if you're doing it because you want to support a company that doesn't do this. <laughs> Because Paizo with the ORC, L, ORC, ORC, the L is silent because Urkel doesn't make any sense. Orc, that's awesome. That's why it's, it's pretty cool. Like, come on, come on, that was creative. You gotta give Paizo credit. You gotta give Paizo a lot of credit. They're, they are winning this scenario. Yes, Watsi, you rolled a one. Paizo ruled a nat 20 on a critical success, whatever it is in their system. It's, it's overcomplicated. I don't know it that well. I just know it's too complicated, and I don't want to deal with it. But if you like complicated, and you like a company that's going to try to give their version of the OGL, the ORC, to a third party so that they don't even control it and can never pull any of this, that's just the company for you. All right, well, that was my attempt at talking about monetization. Um, oh, one thing I didn't mention that I was going to mention in that video was I don't want to pay a subscription fee to access books I already purchased which I, was a fear that might happen. Although, to be fair, I went to cancel my D&D Beyond subscription, but I don't have a D&D Beyond subscription. I just have a book in D&D Beyond and an account with D&D Beyond. I don't have a, I never had a subscription, so I didn't have anything to cancel. If you have a subscription, go cancel it if you don't wanna support this nonsense. Right, yeah. Oh, the other thing too, if you read this carefully, um, VTT uses. They don't talk about VTTs in general, they talk about VTT uses. So they're not affecting me. They're not going to go after me for using Rule 20. That doesn't mean they're not going to go after Rule 20. Right? And they don't say, they don't specify that. The language in here is very, very careful in some places. And then it's completely uncareful when they're like, oh, we won too. Like, it's just arrogance. But yeah, there's definitely things in here um, that are careful. Like, what it will not contain is any royalty structure if they're talking about the OGL. So they're not going to put a royalty structure in the open gaming license. They're going to put it somewhere else. Or in the next open gaming license after that, right? Like they're 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 going for it. They're just not going to put in the OGL. And it, it, none of this has any reassurance that the things that we feared are not something they're going to do. They 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 say they're not going to claw back our products. And to be fair, I don't think they were actually planning on going. Hey, MCDM, that was cool. Ours now. I don't think they were planning on doing that. They might have done that with a class or a feat or a special ability that people are like if everyone's buying a book by mcdm for like one piece or one system they were totally going to steal your steal that system and put that in another book but i don't think they were going to steal the whole book word for word and try to do that i mean that's i guess that's a copyright violation right like there's that that's not what they were going to do but i think what they were going to do is take systems and be like no this is ours like you can't and then use this provision to protect them and also, there's stuff about how they use, like, the Blood Hunter in a TV show. They don't want, you know, Critical Role to be like, I invented that, and therefore, you're violating my copyright. They'd be like, well, you invented it for D&D. We own D&D. We can put it in our TV show. We can put it in our movie, right? I think that's what they were going to go for. Be like, and if you, people want to play it, they can buy your book. Or they can buy our book, where we have our version of it, which would probably have happened. But again, they weren't going to do that whole hog with everything you wrote, just pieces of it and I think it was it would go into a movie first then they would write <laughs> rules to go with the movie version so that it's a couple steps removed um that's what I thought they were going to do with this I don't think they're actually going to try to steal all, all of your work I think they're only going to steal pieces they're going to copy off your homework but they weren't going to steal it right um but yeah they, they have no provision preventing them from doing that they're just claiming that that, that wasn't their goal which is true it wasn't their goal they were gonna do it the way that I just said, where they would put in a movie first, then make the version based off the movie, and so it's so many steps removed, and be like, oh, it's just coincidental, and we've got this provision that protects us. That's what I think they were gonna do. But that's still not great. And the fact that they were gonna try to force everybody to report earnings, and then if you make over a certain amount, you give us royalties, that part is like, 
that's crippling to some of these companies. Now, if you had offered to publish for them, like I had just suggested, that's not crippling. You're taking on some of that cost, and then you're getting a decent chunk of that profit, and you're not putting any money into the production of stuff, which, I mean, you, you just don't offer enough money to take that job, and there's so many good ideas out there, and some people only have a couple of good ideas, right? So you take their one or two good ideas, you publish that for them, and then when they don't have any other good ideas, you just don't publish it. And then you do that with everybody, and you get all the good homebrew coming in through your site. It would have been perfect. I think you screwed the pooch up. So anyway, enough about how Watsy shot themselves in the foot. Um, I'm Darren. Like and subscribe. If you want to check out me using this bow to finish off Skyrim, that's what, I'm, that's what I do. I'll probably be doing that soon. All right. I say soon at the time of this recording. I'm probably going to publish the video first and then do it. All right. Talk to you later, everybody. Peace out.